We are extremely pleased to have May al Dabbagh, Manal al Dawayan, and Alanud al Sharikh, who will be uh, coming up here to talk together about a collaborative project. Um, May is Assistant Professor of Social Research and Public Policy, New York University, Abu Dhabi, and I think also in New York, is that right? Um, she combines social psychology, public policy, and feminist lenses to conduct research on women and work in Saudi Arabia. Uh, her, both her BA and her PhD were in psychology. Manal Adouyan is an artist who uses photography, text, and installation to examine Saudi identity, and in particular the role of women in contemporary society. She works mainly in black and white photography and also experiments with other media and techniques. She's exhibited globally, travels all over the world, um, and is currently showing in two exhibitions in Dubai. Alanuda Sharikh is an award-winning researcher and gender politics consultant who's held teaching posts in Kuwait, Europe, and the US, including a Fulbright scholarship on women and Islam. She's published many books and articles on political cultures and GCC kinship policies, including the Gulf family and popular culture and political identity of the Arabian Gulf states. Um, I wanna, first of all, give a big thank you to the Global Art Forum for coming to Kuwait this year. We're so excited that you're here, and we hope it's uh, gonna be a recurring visit. And secondly, I'm so grateful for this panel. I don't know if Sultan was trying to give me a birthday present, but a panel where I get to talk about women and art with um, one of my favorite uh, female artists and a good friend and a researcher. I mean, yeah, this is a really good idea for me. So um, I'm very excited about this project that uh, an academic and an artist are working on together. And uh, a lot of our work centers on representations of the female, how uh, the narrative gets manipulated by imagery and text and a lot of the time, women themselves aren't in control of that narrative. And I think your work that you're going to show us today really handles that issue uh, in a unique way through the use of academia and art, this kind of collaboration. And uh, you also focus on Saudi women in particular, because to use your words, they're hyper-visualized, and at the same time, they're sort of mystified, yes? so. Can you start us off on this, please, May? Hello? Yes. Great. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much, Anud, for such a nice introduction. We thought um, we'd tell you a little bit about who we are individually, together, and a little bit about the journey we took um, for this joint project. Uh, you're going to have to be a little patient with me, because this is the first time I use this clicker, so I hope I'm using it in the right way. Um, great, okay. So, um, since I am among visual people, I thought I'd have to find a way to kind of articulate who I am in visual terms. This is the best that it gets for somebody who's a social psychologist. Um, so my work is really kind of focused on um, women and work in the Gulf, and this is a sample, like the cover of my syllabus, um, where images actually play a very important role in creating the kinds of conversations that I'd like to have between my students. So you can see the image um, on the far left is actually one of Manal Boyan's uh, images. Uh, and there's an image actually taken from a conference that was done in Kuwait in the middle, and um, an image from a campaign uh, on identity in the Emirates on the left. Uh, and often in my work, I really try to um, investigate the kinds of narr dominant narratives that surround women and women's work interrogate those and interrogate categories like women or work in the Gulf. Um, previous to my current position, I used to be um, at a think tank working on gender issues. Uh, and I founded the uh, Gender and Public Policy Program, which looked at issues of um, women and rights primarily in the Gulf region. Uh, this is an example of some of the publications. Um, and in particular, one of the key issues for us at the time was thinking about the word gender how it's translated into Arabic, so al-gender, or al-naw' al-ijtima'i, the implications of translation, both conceptually but also uh, in terms of practical considerations. Um, finally, this is a copy of a presentation um, which I've given a number of times, where one of Manal's images um, 
features very dominantly, as you can see. It's the perfect starting point for a conversation uh, about the kind of research that I do, uh, which, although takes an experimental framework, looks at the ways in which multiple identities play out in the Gulf region. Um, and so not only is it aesthetically beautiful, but it's actually a really good way to create a new kind of space for people to start thinking about things which are, are quite abstract at the surface, but, um, but uh, can be really felt. So in my own work, um, which is far from the world of artists, art has kind of creeped in in interesting ways. Uh, and I have had this kind of um, collaboration with Manal happening informally, even before this project. Um, yeah, me and May were basically uh, neighbors and childhood friends, and our parents uh, forced us upon each other, I guess. And uh, we eventually, over the years, have become quite close, especially since we share the same interests. And I always come to her house to talk about my projects, and she's an amazing uh, uh, listener with her background in psychology, too. It's helpful in stressful days when you're doing exhibitions. So I'm just going to walk you through a little bit about myself, introduction, and then we'll, we'll launch into our collaboration. So I'm um, an artist, and the type of work I do is very uh, hard to describe. People try to say mainly black and white photography, or, but I really do everything. I'm much more conceptual artist. There's a closer description, and so my concepts are always the main theme and the medium that I use is different. So I've worked in neon, I've worked in installations, and in black and white photography. Um, recently, I've been sort of uh, exploring the idea of uh, research in art, which this is not working. Anyway, recently, I've been working on projects that need It needs you to stand here and press it, huh? <laughs> so last year, and it's been a couple of years, but I started exploring doing mainly research for, me, for a long period of time and then turning it into uh, an artwork if it's possible to do that. Uh, last year was one of uh, turning points in my practice because basically I did a project about crashes, car crashes, where Saudi women were dying uh, all over Saudi Arabia for 25 years in car crashes. I was documenting this in articles, I was collecting videos, and then eventually when I put together my exhibition, I used the research as art. And there was a big discussion about what is the research doing on the wall of a gallery? And then there are people who came and said, this is exactly what we want to see from an artist, the research. We don't, want, we don't care about the art, the, the aesthetic visual. So you can see how it started, these kind of documents, these kind of articles. So I started thinking about actually working on a second project, which really took this concept of research and art to a different level. So I'm not doing it on my own. I brought in my academic friend and we went on a journey. Um, our collaboration, as she showed in her work, started also in my work. These are uh, May's hands. So she's posed for a lot of my photographs. She was the uh, focus of a lot of my artworks. This is part of the I Am collection. This is May's beautiful nose. <laughs> and um, I thought that maybe the next phase or this project that I approached, I would approach it with her and we would design it together as a journey. Um, and there's a lot to be said about the combination of creative thinking among science and art. So luckily Manal thinks that I'm science. This is actually... Um, Hey, I put this. <laughs> this is a surprise, just to keep the conversation real. Um, this, is a, this is why I collaborated with Manan. So in addition to being an absolutely amazing artist, uh, she's also somebody who is incredibly fun. This is actually a picture taken from my son's birthday party. She looks like she's having more fun than the kid, okay? 
Um, so, um, so to be honest, collaboration may be something that you do because it's strategic or it's interesting, but also, frankly, at a purely emotive level because it's totally energizing. Um, thinking about taking on a totally new role as somebody who's used to expressing herself purely in textual terms. Um, being in a situation where you can also experiment, maybe even flirt with the idea of different forms or modes of self-expression that are a little bit more visual, a little bit more interesting and textured. Uh, so for me, being in a situation where I'm the one standing behind the camera, that we were just pre-testing Manal's camera uh, before one of the interviews, was truly a totally a different kind of experience for me. Um, but on the other hand, being in a collaboration with somebody who, I think for the most part, we had a conversation with Anoud earlier today, um, who shared with me a sort of feminist vision of what we were trying to do. So somebody who maybe was in a different realm altogether, but whose uh, interest in collaboration stems also from a belief that some of the most interesting feminist collaborative work, which as you can see uh, by this book produced many decades ago by a number of leading um, Arab um, uh, social scientists, Thraya Turki and Camilla Pozes Solh, um, produce something that is far more interesting uh, than the sum of its parts individually. Uh, and so here we are jumping into a project which was very difficult to explain to academics and certainly I think for the art world maybe also something kind of interesting and new. So um, I'm going to walk you through uh, basically what we did as a collaboration, our journey. Uh, uh, I would like to talk to you about our journey within this project as a collaboration. So me and May received uh, a grant from NYU Abu Dhabi to develop a project of our choice. And we chose to propose something uh, at the very beginning of the project. And seven months later, this project changed in, in a very big way. And there was something to be said about this kind of space that is provided for an artist and an academic to actually explore ideas. There are no restrictions. Nobody told us, well, you started this way. That's what your proposal said. How have you changed everything in that proposal? Our idea in the beginning was really sort of abstract idea of documentation. We wanted to document uh, Saudi women who negotiated their spaces. And our project almost ended up as documenting our negotiation with our personal spaces. Um, the reason that I embarked on this project was uh, originally with the idea, or the, sort of the conclusion we came back with, is in reality, in a lot of my work, and especially, for example, the crash series that I just showed you, a lot of people place doubt on the subjects that I uh, work on, especially if it's focused on women, enough of the women subject. Um, for example, or when I did the crash series, which is really about um, gruesome deaths. A lot of people are like, well, it's too much, the death, you know, what, how are we going to put this on a gallery wall? And small comments like this can seep into your head uh, and bring in doubt. This journey that I took with May, exploring our ideas, exploring our doubts, exploring ethics in general, uh, in documenting and recording uh, things have been represented now in a, uh, a wonderful art project that we have chosen to call Voice Reclaimed. Sure, so just to, to give a quick note before we actually take you through the final installation. I mean, I think what Manan is really getting at here in terms of kind of taking a self-reflexive moment to talk about how there is something to be said about the process and not only the outcome. And this is something that I consider really a privilege uh, because this project um, enabled us to have some space where we were thinking about what we were doing as we were doing it. And by actually documenting the ways in which one's own thinking about oneself and what you're trying to produce changes over time actually gives you um, a very interesting insight into how a creative process comes to being. And so for example, we had, although both of us live in the UAE, are originally from Saudi Arabia, and we're constantly crossing boundaries, coming and going to do our interviews with women there, um, many of our conversations were actually virtual, so on Skype or through email, and those were documented in a series of uh, conversations that we have in a blog. And that in and of itself was a completely separate step 
uh, from what we're going to present to you now, which is kind of the final outcome of our project. Um, May, can I just uh, stop you there for a second? Because this is the theme of this uh, Global Art Forum, you know, how technology affects art. So, in fact, your collaboration, because of technology, you guys didn't need to be in the same room at the same time. So, part of your work is enabled by this technology. So, can you, before you show us the video, can you talk about that element a little bit? Sure, you know, I think, um, while it would be really easy to say that technology is enabling, um, you could also, or at least my opinion is that it can also be very deceptive. There's something um, very powerful about physically being in the same space as someone. And although I don't think anybody would argue that um, uh, technology doesn't make things easier, uh, when Manal uh, was doing her, uh, spending a month uh, on Captiva in Florida, and I was uh, in Dubai, there was no way we would have been able to continue working on our project had it not been for these Skype calls. Um, but on the other hand, um, for example, one of the most powerful moments, I would say, that I personally have, have had, and maybe also Manal, I'm not sure, um, was when we were physically in the room, for example, with women, hearing their stories. Something about that physicality, that presence, that I think sometimes with technology, you kind of tend to overlook or forget. Um, so I would say my personal view is that I'm very ambivalent. I think that te technology can do some things, but not everything. Well, for me, I think collaborations, especially in the lives of super busy women, <laughs> like we are, would have not happened without technology. Definitely this project would have never been completed. It would have stalled for at least four years until we actually freed up our schedules. We were speaking against time zones, uh, across borders, between um, your son having a fever, uh, my mother throwing a dinner party, and we still maintained a, a weekly meeting and a blog and documentation. Of course, the physicality of it was much more funner. But um, I'd like to now move into uh, talking about the, the artwork itself because there's different layers to it. And definitely I invite you all to go into the blog that we've posted on um, the NYU website, which documents a, a, a conversation that actually highlights this, this situation of technology being uh, a main integral part in our little conversation because I would send May an email and then she would respond with an email, and this is exactly what our blog is about. It's a, an email correspondence. Um, what developed out of this correspondence is a project we're presenting to you today, which is called Voice Reclaimed. Um, do you want to present the structure of it? Yeah? So, conceptually, this project comes in sh a shape. So we're going to d describe it in quite detail and then maybe go into more um, uh, storytelling of what, what is inside it in content. We chose the circle form to represent the final findings of our research. And I don't like to call it research because it's not really academic, but what the journey that we took. And um, it, it was quite a struggle to come back with a physical form for our thoughts, our documentation, which took seven to eight months, had multiple uh, things into it, and we had to dilute this into something very personal and representative of our journey. Um, we started with the circles, concentric circles. There is an outer circle called the others, an inner circle called the narrators, and an inner core called the voice. So do you want to talk about the, the others? Yeah. Sure. So one of the, one of the issues about, um, about this project was that as we were doing it, we were also um, uh, becoming increasingly aware of the way in which um, both Manad and I uh, were navigating um, various discourses about Saudi women as a category. But also, many of the women that we met themselves spoke about this kind of notion of being surrounded by ways of understanding them that are imposed by others on them. And so we thought that we would like to represent what it means to be constantly uh, viewed as an object of scrutiny by a variety of forces and voices. And we chose 
uh, a book to symbolize this, but really, I mean, you could imagine that narratives and discourses take a variety of forms, including media, for example. Um, and those books um, include, I think they're, yeah. Um, include books like this, by the way, one of the best-selling books that you would find at almost all of the bookstores that I visited. It also um, um, is found in the anthropology section of Harvard's um, Widener Library. So this is what you need to know if you want to know anything about Saudi women. Um, but you also have books in, where Saudi women are actually the object of uh, discourse um, uh, in Arabic. So. Um, these books, um, with a sample here, uh, are from uh, bookstores in Saudi Arabia, which also target women as a subject and in, which are often interventionist. Um, you have books such as, uh, such as uh, academic books, which attempt to kind of highlight the ways in which representations about not only Saudi women, but other categories, such as Muslim or Middle Eastern women, are highly problematic. Uh, and then you have books by women themselves, so women aiming to articulate a space in that uh, arena where they can also have a say about their own representations. So um, going back to the former, uh, so I, this is sort of the concept of this outer circle that we've titled The Others. Uh, in, in our installation, we've chosen to represent it in this style of plinths with books uh, the viewer would have to engage with the contents on these plinths by navigating through uh, these plinths. And it's basically what we do on a daily basis as uh, women or Muslim women or Arab women or maybe women in general. You go through these different voices that are trying to define or interpret who you are and follow a certain path to find your personal um, storyline. Manal, I want to ask you about this personal storyline. So you're two uh, Saudi women and who are friends and who are very close. And we were speaking a little bit about this safe place from which you can navigate this journey. So you can find your definition of what it means to be a woman and an artist and an academic and struggling with these imposed representations through a safe place. So how important it is, the fact that you're both women dealing with this very female-centric subject and you have a history of trust and friendship between you. How important is that to the women's issue that you keep coming back to? Yeah, there's definitely something about um, you know, having a partner that you can have a conversation with and be vulnerable, you know, really lay it out and have them have them give you a moment where your, your, the reflected sense of yourself is also there. But um, let me tell you, too close, too far. Is it closer? I feel like this is too intense. No, is it far? Okay. okay. Um, but let me tell you something. You know, Manal is a tough cookie. <laughs> it's I'm a, a pussycat. It's, it's, yeah, it's a safe space, but you know, but she really, really pushes um, the boundaries on, you know, um, she really challenges many things um, that one could assume are taken for granted, you know, um, and in very good ways. I think, um, like in any collaboration, you have these moments where you feel like we are floating together in the same direction, and it's great. Then you have other moments where you're like, I don't know if I agree with this, or is this really the right approach? Um, but I mean, I have, to, I have to say that I think, uh, for me, a collaboration that results in a friendship that is even stronger than what you started off with is usually a sign of a good collaboration. So I think safe is a word that, um, that I think definitely applies, uh, but in very per peculiar kinds of ways, you know? Um, shall I move on with the project? Uh, I'll go ahead and finish up the, the, the circles that we're talking about. So in continuation to being in a safe place, another thing that we've created was the conversations with the women, which is the narrators. And what we had done is within our energy, we were able to actually engage with a variety of women across Saudi Arabia who in reality are not defined as the heroes, as 
a lot of people want. Either you recognize the Saudi woman as a hero or as the oppressed woman. There are people in that space between, and we were trying to find them among uh, the women that we interviewed. And so um, we're going to play a video that represents the narrators. Do you want to talk about it a little bit while we Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, the key thing is that um, uh, the original project started off with this premise of we're going to create an archive of stories by Saudi women. And then taking a much kind of more subjective feminist approach, we decided we are not interested in a project of pure representation. The Saudi woman as a monolith is not something that we are interested in talking about. Uh, and rather, we are reaching out to individual women. I mean, women we knew, whose stories we knew something about. And we wanted to engage in a, in a conversation with them. And what came out of these conversations are moments of pure emotion, but also deep insight into what women's lives um, were, the textured ways in which they narrate those stories, and created a kind of space in which actually we felt like we had also found our own stories at the same time. Um, we're going to play for you um, a three-minute video of one of the segments that we chose. And these are going to be sort of, we've designed these interviews not to be a story. Actually, we've grabbed moments where we felt uh, there was a connection between us and what is being said in the video. يجيني شعور بالنفور من من نفس الأسئلة اللي تطرح زي ما أنتوا قلتوا إنه بما إنه أنتي مرأة سعودية فنفس المواضيع بالضبط كأنها شريط ينعاد. دخلت في قصة التلفزيون كنت على قصة البنطلون هذا ها فأجي أحط رجل على رجل والأيار تحت هذا السروال ها السروال اللي مشتغل اللي اللي محيانا بدنس الجاوي والأشياء يعني المعتبرة. ويجيني وأنا في استوديو مثلا في التلفزيون وتجيني تقول لي المذيعة أنه ترى الرقابة الدينية يقولون غير قابلين على المنظر أنا طالعة فيه ما بين شايف ما بين البنطلون اللي طالعة أنا طيب باي باي خليهم هم يجوا قابليهم <تصفيق> باي باي قلت لها دحين أنا أمشي إذا في أي أحد يبغى يدخل وديني رأيه في أنا إيش ألبس ولا إيش ما ألبس أوكي وقولي لهم الكلام ترند إز السعوديات يبغوا إحنا سلعة مطلوبة الآن كل أحد يبغى يحطنا في الصورة وفي تحت المجهر وتحت الضوء ويعملوا بينا مقالات ويعملوا كسب صحفي وكسب إعلامي وكسب ده إنه حطينا سعودية وير كوماديتي بيسك في ستيريو تايب معين ويعني يا أنه أنت تكوني يعني المرأة السعودية اللي هم ما يشوفوها أو المرأة السعودية اللي يشوفوها أوكي اللي هي لبرال وكذا فيبغوا يعني تعرفي فكأنه صيدة أحس أنا ساعات كأني لدرجة أنه أحيانا على فكرة صرت, صرت, صرت ممكن أقابل ناس سواء في مثلا كونفرنسز ولا في ولا أكون يعني حتى مسافرة كذا يعني فتعرفي ممكن أحيانا صرت يعني لما يسألوني هم إنه صحيح المرأة السعودية كذا كذا مدري إيش فصرت أنا اللي أستمع وخليهم هم يتكلموا عرفتي <تصفيق> يعني هم يقولوا لي مدري إيش ويقولوا كذا ويقولوا المرأة السعودية ما تقدر تسوي كذا ويقولوا المرأة السعودية أكثر فأنا أقول لهم أيوة <تصفيق> فبطلت يا بنتي في الأول تعرفي أولا سذاجة وبعدين you want you think it's for the good وعند تلاقي إن أنت you have been used ف I don't anymore I don't, unless I really trust the person, I trust the person, I trust in the issue, and I feel that my participation will add something to the value. Other than that, if no one knows me, I am not one of them. So that's the end of the video. And this video is themed around the idea of uh, negotiating media. And um, we have other themes like uh, negotiating identity and belonging, negotiating motherhood, negoti negotiating men in our lives, and so on and so forth. Now these uh, images, if we can go back to the, um, our presentation, these videos are placed in the installation facing inwards in the second circle because it gets closer to basically what we had found within these uh, stories where we've validated some of our opinions maybe through other 
uh, women's stories. So this is the final part of the installation, which is the core of it. And it's basically two chairs uh, facing each other, representing the conversation between me and May. Um, uh, that first and second of all, the core of the project, which is uh, our voice reclaimed. Yeah. I think um, just, just as an, also an aside, um, the project at the moment, or the installation, is still in its experimental phase, meaning um, the uh, images that you see are essentially a sort of pilot test of what we're actually putting together. But it's uh, showing right now in Manal Studio because we're interested in engaging in conversation with people who come, who navigate that space, recording their reactions, and that's going to be part of the final installation itself. Okay, ladies, thank you for uh, walking us through this. But um, I have to ask you a question. I think we can end on this question. Um, so the installation ends with two Saudi women surrounded by all these images of Saudi women through their own stories and through how others see them. And um, there's maybe been this discussion that Manal spoke about a little bit and another uh, artist also brought up to my attention that it seems like Saudi women need to engage with the woman issue before they can move on to a wider spectrum. So how does this installation and your work as an academic and as an artist handle that? First of all, I'd like to point out we are Saudi and we did engage with women in our country, but it really is not about the nationality. Uh, it was a journey about uh, where two individuals uh, were engaging in a thought process and an exchange that in, at times felt a lot of doubt and a lot of uh, moments of weakness and moments of extreme strength. And we found our voice through different elements uh, within our uh, journey. So it's really, it does, it's not defined by the uh, nationality, it just happened to be that. And one, of the, um, one of the things um, that hopefully when you all come to the installation itself you'll see is that we actually really interrogate this notion um, of what it means to be Saudi. I mean, what was really fascinating about the narratives by these women is, um, as the presentation that we heard um, earlier this, um, earlier this uh, afternoon, this notion of belonging to a place is something that is constantly in flux and constantly being constructed by a variety of forces, both within and outside the country. And this notion of a bounded entity in which only people who are really, really, really from this place can call themselves Saudi is totally ridiculous. Um, and in fact, most of the stories of belonging and identity that we heard were multifaceted and very complex and um, uh, spanned things like Arabism in Egypt, you know, during the exact same period, um, but also regional, moving between different regions, you know, within the country and notions of wanting to come back after studying abroad. These were very strong themes that we heard in the narratives. And to be really honest, um, part of the issue of you know, of this notion of uh, voice reclaimed uh, for the both of us, perhaps, is that we had both been crossing many boundaries. And this notion of being in this liminal state where you are changing. You're changing and you are, uh, your, own, your own sense of belonging and self are changing as well. It doesn't mean that that's necessarily something that is outside of discourse, uh, but very much shaped by it. So, um, so I hope that when people engage with our project, that the Saudi part is something that they engage with, but not necessarily in this kind of flat and simplistic form. Well, thank you so much uh, on behalf of the entire feminist cultural continuum. <laughs> and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the session as much as I did. <laughs>